it's remarkable to see as the, um, as the industries transform themselves how common their needs are. Hi there, I'm Sam George. I'm the Director of Program Management for Azure IoT at Microsoft. Uh, within Microsoft and the Azure division, I'm responsible for IoT. Oh, well, again, thanks for coming out today for doing this uh, interview with Reedbrain. Um, perhaps give us a little bit of background. We realized, um, looking across the industry, that IoT was really going to be sort of the next wave of computing uh, right after mobile. Um, and so, um, you know, put together our product plans uh, and launched those uh, late last year. Uh, we've been in market since then and uh, um, seeing some amazing traction. It's a really, it's a really great growth area. It, it, I mean, it is a seem to be a gold rush right now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are, you guys clearly know who your competitors are out there as well. But yeah, how, do you, how are you seeing the sort of broader marketplace then? So I'm fond of saying that IoT is a new normal, uh, just like web and mobile and before it. Um, it's very much here and it's very much happening, uh, which is nice to see. It's not hype anymore. Um, and it's happening all over industries, which is really refreshing to see. And probably one of the most exciting things about my job is just how unexpected it is and how many areas that you see transforming. Um, you know, we have a lot of different offerings. Uh, we started with a huge set of platform as a service offerings uh, in Azure. There's, of course, Windows 10 IoT Core. Uh, my, te my team does an unbelievable amount of things now from open source device SDKs to open source uh, field gateway SDKs for IoT to all of our platform as a service offerings for everything from cloud gateways to analytics to storage to presentation to business process integration. You know, one of the most daunting things about IoT is that it spans all of those topics. And so, um, you know, it is here, but it can be confusing. And what we do at Microsoft and what we do in Azure is to simplify that and to make it so that you can get started quickly. So the most important thing that we do is something we call the Azure IoT Suite. And what the Azure IoT Suite is is that as we worked with customers and early partners, we realized that there were these repeatable patterns that we started seeing again and again and again in IoT. Some customers were just re remotely monitoring devices. Some customers were doing predictive maintenance on them. Some customers were managing assets. And so what we've done is we've put together some very easy to use uh, pre-configured solutions. And so you walk up to a website, azureiotsuite.com, you give us your Azure subscription, we provision a working end-to-end -end IoT solution that'll scale to millions of devices in about five minutes. Um, and so you can see the whole thing working end-to-end, -end, and we even include some simulated devices so you can see it working before you even flash a device. I mean, and that's part of the thing about IoT. Um, you know, it really is kind of a, a term spread a lot of, across a lot of industries that may have very different needs. Um, you know, smart cities, smart home hubs, uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, it, how hard is that for you? I mean, as you're sitting basically on top of that as a platform, how do you, uh, how do you find yourself melding the various needs of what could be very different industries otherwise? You know, it, it's remarkable to see as the, um, as the industries transform themselves how common their needs are. Um, you know, for example, there's a very common need to have to, you know, receive telemetry from devices and send commands out to them to be able to do device management, update the software, firmware, configuration on devices. You see that across all the market segments. It's very common to have you know, storage and analytics and to be able to control the entire solution using websites and um, you know, dashboards and visualizations and things like that. You know, so think of it like what we do is very, very horizontal. And then there's a whole bunch of vertical specializations that are either provided by the customers or that are provided by system integrators that we partner with and ISVs that we partner with. Um, but the needs are very, very common. Uh, very good. And, and you know, basically what you're talking about here right now is a, a, a kind of, we're already well aware of it, kind of a data tsunami that's going to happen, um, you know, from Microsoft or, or, you know, some of your competitors or even some of your clients are out you know, building that capacity to handle data, but also working with uh, Microsoft to handle some of that capacity as well. Is this, <laughs> how do you see this kind of gold rush in, 
data capacity playing out maybe in the next, uh, you know, in the next few years? Because uh, it seems to be a build and a rent at the same time. Well, I'm glad you asked. I mean, and it's one of the reasons why cloud is so perfect for IoT, because you have, you know, unlimited scale. So one of the, one of the things that we do uh, with Azure IoT um, is some of our data storage options include a new service called Data Lake. Data Lake originated inside of the, the Bing team and is now uh, productized as an infinite size you know, data repository. Um, within Microsoft, uh, Data Lake is used to store six copies of, an in, of the index of the internet. So very, very high ingestion rates, very, very high data volumes. IoT is you know, a perfect fit for it. So um, we're, we're absolutely ready for IoT and we're already seeing great adoption. Sorry, did you say six copies? Yeah, six copies of the index. Why is it six copies? Yeah, uh, it's internal Bing stuff. <laughs> okay, all right, very good. Um, and there's some questions, uh, again, uh, thanks for coming out. There's some questions that uh, we ask everybody who comes here and people come from, you know, from whether they're from autonomous vehicles or whether they're from uh, you know, other platforms of data security. Uh, you know, because IT is such a new term, we want to kind of track how it's going to change. Um, you know, for you, if somebody walks up the street and asks you, uh, what is IoT? Yeah. yeah, what do you say? Great question. Um, you know, IoT to us is just uh, a new technique in computing, which is harnessing signals from remote devices. Um, you know, those devices just happen to be getting much smaller, um, able to survive on, you know, little bits of battery, um, able to be field deployed with, um, you know, limited network connectivity and things like that. Um, so IoT to us is just, you know, it makes sense when you step back and think about it in terms of the former revolutions in computing from mains, mainframes to PCs to smartphones. Things are just getting smaller and smaller and cheaper and cheaper, able to survive on their own. So IoT is really just a technique uh, that you can apply to lots of domains. And so um, one of our customers, for example, Rolls-Royce, is applying that to tracking uh, inputs from their jet engines to do predictive maintenance on them and to predict fuel needs. Some of our other customers, like ThyssenKrupp, are doing it to do predictive maintenance on elevators so they service less and can change their business model. And so it really, IoT is more of a technique than a thing. Oh, great. And, you know, where do you see, um, you know, again, because it is such a popular buzz phrase right now, kind of where do you see IoT in a year and where do you see it in a decade, do you yeah. think? You know, or it, will we be using this term? I think so. I think we will, uh, certainly for the next, for the next few years. <laughs> right. um, you know, it's a catchy term. There's a lot of different uh, takes on it, but um, I, I think we'll be using the term. Um, where I see it going is, you know, right now, the gold rush that's happening and the land rush that's happening is that the early adopters have all figured out that IoT is ready for business. And, you know, they're rushing in right now and doing lots of things like making sure that they're servicing less by using, you know, big data analytics to predict their servicing needs, keeping track of things. You, you would be shocked the number of customers that I talk to that just say, just knowing where my things are has value. It's, it's really sort of at that level. I think what's going to happen over the next couple of years is that you're going to see it entering the mainstream more and more and more, and people realizing that it's no longer hype and hasn't been, and that you know, it's really here, and it's a new take technique to take advantage of, just like cloud and mobile and PCs before. Now, that's an interesting point, too, where you're saying, kind of, it does seem like the first generation of IoT is discovery. Um, you know, I am, you know, large industrial company X, and I say, you know, like, I didn't even know I had the opportunity That's to right. leverage this kind of data until they can actually see it. N never mind whatever the next step may be, which is like, okay, let's deploy the next. Just step. leverage the data, even start collecting it. You know, there's a lot where it's, you know, companies want to know things and they realize, oh, there's a new technique I can use to know those things. Yeah. Uh, uh, one final question. Um, so uh, now that you're at the forefront of this, uh, yeah. what keeps you at night about the IoT uh, world? What keeps me up at night? Yeah. Uh, it's just exciting space to be in. I mean, we're thrilled to be in it. And it's fun to be at the forefront of this new wave. Um, really, it's just you know how fast can we move and how, how quickly can we uh, help our customers succeed.